lesser Lord Kusanali has escaped from the sanctuary of Surasthana, go to the city and arrest the escapee immediately. <sighs> How can that be? Stop thinking about it. Stop. It must be a trick of theirs. As long as I personally confirm it. Ah! Impossible. That's impossible. There must be something wrong with my eyes. Oh. Huh? She really appeared again? What is the meaning of this? What a comical sight is our. Once the Akasha has put certain thoughts into your head, even the Grand Sage can no longer see what's right in front of him. You all can only see the world in your mind, the one you think you know. And precisely because of this, you disregarded Lesser Lord Kusanali's existence. She has been a wise and worthy Archon. Sino. Have you been waiting for a chance like this? The Akasha predicted that you would return to the Academia to confront me. But I didn't expect it to turn out like this. I was careless. No, you were blinded. Your faults stem from your reliance on the Akasha. You're still the same as always. I truly did not expect a proud person like you to cooperate with Al Haytham and the Traveler. People change, Azar. Admit it. The Akasha can't predict my actions anymore. <laughs> then tell me, what have you found during your investigation? You want to buy time? This is the Sanctuary of Suristhana. Under your own regulations, even Academia staff are forbidden to come here. No one will come to save you. As for the investigation, I've at least confirmed that you are guilty of insurgency against the Archon. A serious crime. So what? Did you do all of this so I would plead guilty in front of you, General Mahamatra? No. I want you to plead guilty in front of the Archon herself. You once said that I had no standing to judge you. So now, how about judgment in the name of a god? Mm, how long do we have to wait? Paimon wants to know how things are going out there. <sighs> Paimon hasn't heard any sounds outside for a while. Hopefully something bad didn't happen. Yeah, but aren't you scared that we might be locked up in here for the rest of our lives? <sighs> Thinking about it, at least Paimon has you. We could still chat like this. When Paimon thinks of Nahida being imprisoned alone in the sanctuary of Suristhana, Paimon can't help but feel sorry for her. Here comes your savior. Dia! just knew you would come to rescue us! You two really owe me some big thanks. I had to search through who knows how many guards to find the key here. It felt even more tiring than whacking them. I'm exhausted. Thanks a lot. Need Paimon to rub your shoulders? Uh, no, no, that's, uh, I'll pass. What are you afraid of? Oh, are you ticklish? Ugh, now isn't the time to talk about being ticklish. Things in the city and on Sino's side are both going well. The guards that stormed out of the Academia are all taken care of. The Corps of Thirty is in charge of the city's defenses, but we already talked to Asvand. They've been fed up with the sages bossing them around. As long as it doesn't break their employment contracts, they'll turn a blind eye. That's probably because you've been super great friends with them for a long time. So, how's Sino doing? The Grand Sage is in his custody. Even I know how terrible it is to fall into Sino's hands, so he probably does too. 
Sino forced him to release Lesser Lord Kusanali. He has no choice but to obey. So, hurry to the Sanctuary of Suristhana. Assuming nothing weird happened, we should have already rescued our Archon. Honestly, I didn't expect our ragtag bunch to do this well. We just came together last minute to save the Archon, you know? Alright, you two better go. I still have to clean up some messes in the city. See you around! Nice to meet you. This is the first time we've met in real life. Before, we've only met in dreams, consciousness, or when I was in someone else's body. Thank you so much for coming to rescue me, but I also need to apologize. During this time, I did some self-reflection. My sense of inferiority and yielding to the Academia led to all of this, and created so much trouble for you all. Exactly! We're here because you're a good Archon and one of our friends! <laughs> Thanks, you two. <sighs> Amazing! So this is how it feels to walk out of that cage with my own body. It's like I just had an endlessly long dream. I can't even tell if I just woke up or was only now born into this world. My concept of self has become so clear. <clears throat> but now doesn't seem to be the time to indulge in this feeling. Um, this is really embarrassing. You all just rescued an Archon, and now she needs her help to save her country, and... Even the entire world. It's okay. With you here, Paimon's sure that everything will work out. There's one more thing. What is it? For all the things the Academia did to me, and for all the folly it committed in the name of wisdom, as their Archon, I will make them pay. Ah! Wow! That's the spirit! You're finally standing up for yourself and not letting people walk all over you! <laughs> I understand now. To be a better Archon, I first need to better myself. If you haven't even figured out how to be a caterpillar, how can you be a butterfly? Yes, true. Hmm, that reminds me. I wonder how far along the Academia is with their God Creation Plan. We need to hurry and prevent the birth of that false god. I need to make some preparations. Since I'm now free, I can establish a direct link to the Akasha and control it. First things first, I need to remove the restrictions that the doctor put on me in the Akasha. After that, I'll make some adjustments and revoke the sage's permissions. The Akasha will then be like how it originally was only operable by the Archon. After all, the Academia betrayed Greater Lord Rukadovata's trust. This might take some time. In the meantime, you should also work on your own preparations. If we don't stop the God Creation Plan in time, we'll be in for a tough fight. How's it going, Nahida? I'm done with the parts that needed my involvement to complete. Although it's my first time working with the Akasha like this, its internal structure and operation procedures are easy for me to understand. Greater Lord Rukadavata's design is truly brilliant! Oh, also, this is for you! Huh? What's this little floaty thingy? It's a small device I put together just now. You can think of it as an upgraded Akasha Terminal. You may not need it right now, but it should be helpful in certain situations. Wait! This thing has the same characteristics as Paimon! We're both small things that float! Oh, all the things that make Paimon special got copied! When Paimon appears with the Traveler from now on, people won't remember Paimon because... 
because she isn't unique anymore! <laughs> it's alright, Paimon. It can't replace you. It's only a flying device, but you're the traveler's irreplaceable friend. <sighs> you're so good at comforting people, Nahida. If only the traveler was as smart as you! Hmm? I was simply telling you what I feel to be the truth. I wasn't trying to comfort you. Nahida, you're natural at this! What you just said made Paimon even happier! By the way, there's something I need to confess. Even though I'm the Archon and in control of myself again, I'm not very good at fighting. You may have heard that an Archon's power is derived from their people's faith. However, I'm not as well loved as Greater Lord Ruka Devata. If we get into a situation where combat is our only option, I'll have to count on you and I'll do my best to provide support. I'm glad I can rely on you. Hmm. So the God of Wisdom isn't good at fighting? That actually sounds about right. I've located where the false god is. Time is of the essence, so let's skip to it. What is this place? Is this really the way we need to go? Wow. Who would have thought there'd be a place like this hidden right slap bang in the middle of the city? The sages wanted to realize their god creation plan without being discovered. The safest and most convenient way would be to build within the academia itself. Hmm, that's true. They were already hiding one god, so why not two? Judging from the structure here, the project is a huge undertaking. The sages really saw the god creation plan as their ultimate goal. But this place doesn't look like it could have been constructed by the academia alone. The Fatui under the doctor sure didn't hold back. They provided a lot of technological support. Yeah! Or else they wouldn't have been that generous. Is that it, though? I've always felt that this doctor is different from the Academia Sages. He doesn't seem to share their sense of urgency. Instead of being interested in the end product, it's like he's enjoying the experimental process. Hmm. The Fatui Harbingers are all such weirdos. So, the doctor being weird is actually normal. So, this Fatui that they're trying to turn into a god is called the Balladeer? We had previously come into contact with his consciousness. He harbors particularly strong obsessions. One is the desire for a gnosis, since he was created to be the vessel for one. The other obsession is probably related to his past. I can't quite explain it. Paimon knows that he was a prototype puppet for the Raiden Shogun before he became a Fatui Harbinger. That's why he wants a Gnosis so badly! There's no way he'd willingly be a test subject! Now with that temper and ego of his... It sounds like you know the Balladeer quite well. I see. Tell me more about him and what he's like. The more we know now, the better we can plan for and react to any future situation. Ah, I see. How fascinating. Alright, time to go. Let's get through here and meet him in person. Looking at its operational status, we must prepare for the worst. The god they wanted to create is likely close to completion or already completed. Oh no, what should we do? Paimon can't imagine how hard it would be to fight against a Fatui Harbinger with a Gnosis. Are you nervous, Paimon? If you really want to know, of course Paimon's nervous! Aren't you too, Nahida? Yes, I am. This is probably the first time I faced with a calamity of this degree since my birth. I feel not just nervous, but curious as well. Curious? Curious about what? Curious 
about our fate. To me, everything we perceive in this world, everything we learn, and everything that happens to us is considered knowledge. And if it's a form of knowledge, then it can be understood. However, only fate is about that which has yet to occur, so it has always drawn my curiosity. So to me, fate is the ultimate knowledge. That's also why I love observing humans and all the things that happen to them. It all brings me great satisfaction. And now, at long last, I'm not just an observer anymore. I will personally experience my own fate with you by my side. <laughs> Isn't this such a wonderfully exciting thing? Ah, so that's what you mean. Paimon thinks she understands what you're feeling. Agreed. Okay, let's continue on. I can sense his aura from here. be so eager for my birth. I remember you, Boor, the god of wisdom, and standing beside you, the traveler. Is he all knowing and powerful now, like greater Lord Ruka Devada? No, I can't feel the same kind of divinity I felt from the greater Lord. It seems that the sages didn't get the chance to infuse the divine knowledge capsules into him. But even still, he has undoubtedly become a true god now. <sighs> so we're too late? The Balladeer has already... already become a god? The Balladeer. A long bygone title. When my spirit ascended to divinity, I felt as if I had existed for the same number of epochs as heaven and earth. Looking back, the existence of what once called itself Kuni Kazushi appears infinitely small and ugly. This imposing aura... It really feels like a god! A body that capitalizes on the Balladeer's original construction as a mechanical puppet, with the Gnosis serving as a constant power supply. How much effort and resources did the Sages put into this? From a purely technological perspective, it's a commendable achievement indeed. It's no exaggeration to say, this is the culmination of human wisdom. You sure are something! Dishing out compliments at a time like this? But I don't think he's reached the spiritual height of a god. Strife is engraved upon every god and every gnosis brought forth into this world. Can you feel it? The exhilaration of such power and the thrill of anticipation for our contention. Nahida wouldn't feel the same things as you! Do you not realize that you are interrupting a conversation between gods? Lowly creature, Know your place! The strife engraved upon a Gnosis. You're talking about the Archon War. Tavat's current peace was not easily won. I didn't personally participate in the Archon War, but the way I see it... All those losses were meaningless, driven by the demands of the laws. There's no point in bringing it up again. <laughs> Is that so? Yet I am deeply disappointed that I was never allowed the fortuity to personally participate in the Archon War. This is a first. Encountering a god in this world who does not crave power. No wonder your own people have abandoned you, god of wisdom. <laughs> your judgment is as your existence. Unsubstantial. 
This is where everything ends, Boor. The God of Wisdom. You should know that wisdom cannot solve every problem. Like now, where your only option is to face me in combat. Come! Let us reenact a scene of the Archon War. Come and inaugurate my birth as a god. This is supposed to be a battle between gods, yet you choose to hide behind a mortal. And now, you're acting like you'd sacrifice yourself for a human. Are you having fun proving a false sense of heroism to yourself, Boor? <laughs> You've tried to take my gnosis from me? <sighs> we just concluded the 168th loop. <gasps> Did you know that in the effort to create you? The people of Sumeru were forced to live through the exact same number of Subzerus festivals and Samsara cycles. The power of dreams. When did you use it on me? <laughs> you can't even defeat me in a dream. What do you hope to achieve with this little trick? Huh? Come, Traveler. Just like before. Allow me to awaken the memories in your dreams. <gasps> All that battle experience! It's more than that. Compile everyone's wisdom in the name of the Archon. That is the original function of the Akasha. I've sent everything that happened just now to the people of Sumeru in the form of knowledge. I've asked them... to help you find a way to defeat the false god. Wisdom is at your disposal. <laughs> Meaningless tricks won't save you.
Are you done with your tricks? Can I finally take this as a real battle between gods? I'll leave this to you. The first sage. A boar. Humans. Filthy humans. That's mine! Don't even try! I'll never! I'll never go back! yet found the answer to the most important mystery. Ermin's soul is still waiting to be saved. With the power of another Gnosis, we may now finally understand the last memory of Greater Lord Rukadevata. Huh? This is... That's right. This is the last memory of my predecessor. from what Paimon imagined. Shouldn't Ermin Soul be in this realm of consciousness? Yes, that is our destination. But I didn't expect the remaining consciousness of Greater Lord Rukadavata to be as polluted as this. Forbidden knowledge? <sighs> it seems you know about a concept that even I don't completely understand. Could you tell me what you know? Hmm, your inference seems logical enough. Forbidden knowledge once polluted the desert thousands of years ago, but was successfully repelled thanks to King Deshret's self-sacrifice and Greater Lord Rukadevata nearly exhausting her power. Then, a second instance of forbidden knowledge pollution occurred during the Conria Cataclysm 500 years ago. But I'm afraid it is much more serious this time, with Ermin's soul itself already in danger. So, if we're in the remaining consciousness of Greater Lord Rukadevata, and it's also been affected by forbidden knowledge pollution, then does that mean, in order to save us, Greater Lord Rukadevata? Yes. It's very possible that she sacrificed her life in the fight against forbidden knowledge. She didn't completely eradicate forbidden knowledge, but if it weren't for her actions, the pollution would have been far more rampant over these past 500 years. The way that everyone, including me, has forgotten everything about forbidden knowledge may very well be due to her restoration of Ermin's soul. <laughs> Aww. Do you feel sad, Nahida? I'm just... <laughs> is sharing her pain. The pollution of her consciousness here is severe. There is madness, chaos, and pain all around us. Did she fight to resist the forbidden knowledge pollution in such terrible conditions, all the way up to her last breath? She even used her last remnant of lucid consciousness to leave a clue for us to follow. Yes. Her words were distorted by forbidden knowledge, so that's all we could hear. But now, we have a chance to find the answer to this mystery. 
We can cross the polluted consciousness until we found the right path to meet with her lucid consciousness. And then, we'll let Greater Lord Rukadavata tell us the truth in person. Each of us need to be mindful of the state of our own consciousness while we are here. Even with the Gnosis's protection, we must always keep a clear mind. Otherwise, we could go mad at any moment. <sighs> That's so scary! Don't worry, it should be easy enough for you to keep that mind of yours clear, Paimon. Let's go! In the air? And why is there a huge boat? That's the boat of consciousness, which symbolizes reason here. Its course is the... Wow! What are these? The monsters seem to have been affected by them! We changed direction! Are we still going the right way, Nahida? Mm-hmm. Judging from the current route, the boat of consciousness will soon take us out of here. We'll be arriving at our destination soon. How are you feeling? Are your minds still intact? Huh? But everything's been completely normal for Paimon! Hopefully there won't be any more interruptions. This time, we should be able to meet Greater Lord Rukadevata. Are you saying you've never met Greater Lord Rukadevata before? No. It seems that my birth and her death took place at the same time. Otherwise, I think she would have given me a little more guidance, and I could have done a better job. Hey, you've done a great job, Nahida! Let's get out of this creepy place and go meet her! So, is this the place you were talking about? The base of Ermansoul? Well, this is the place. Greater Lord Rukadevata, right? But the one standing over there is... Is that... Mm -hmm. She looks exactly like me. Are you Greater Lord Rukadevata? Yes, that's me. Are you surprised by my appearance? Ermansoul and the surrounding lands have been reproduced here as they were years ago. But this is just a realm of consciousness. We are manifestations of the same nature. Hence why we would appear exactly the same. Hmm? We're... of the same nature? Why? Because you are me, and I am you. You are me in the new samsara. The new samsara? As Greater Lord Rukadevata, I'm the avatar of Ermansoul. And you are the purest branch snapped from Ermansoul. Imagine it this way. Even if a tree dies, its branches will eventually take root and grow, continuing the tree's life in another form. I'm merely the remaining consciousness of Greater Lord Rukadevata. The real me has presumably died a long time ago. Hmm... Judging from your appearance, I've probably been dead for 500 years. But you're finally here. 
my new self in the samsara. If this is true, then am I going to be a great archon like you someday? Though we share the same nature, our fates are bound to be different. All things have their own fate. When a branch grows into a mature tree, it won't be the same as the original tree. That's why fate is the ultimate knowledge, isn't it? That's a great insight. Yes, very good. It's also precisely why you won't become like me. <sighs> really? But perhaps you may become an even greater Archon than I. I already see a determination in you that I didn't possess in my time. And the future that it leads you to will be yours alone. Along with the blessings from your past experiences. Don't worry. The growth of wisdom is like that of a plant. You only need to wait quietly for the flower to bloom. Come to think of it, the sages never had the faintest inkling of the meaning of wisdom. Thank you. Nothing makes me happier than discovering that the Archon I always admired was in fact myself in another fate. It's so nice to speak with you, Greater Lord Rukadevata. I've always wanted to meet you. The feeling is mutual. From the moment I snapped the branch off Ermin's soul and created you, I've also looked forward to talking with you. Could you tell me why you wanted to create me? And what exactly happened when you died? Ah, uh, I see. You're here seeking answers, right? Everything that day, even the sky itself, changed into a color like this. At that time, the Seven were all summoned to the nation of Conria. Except for me. I had a more important task to attend to. I had to protect Erminsoul. The disaster occurred together with the pollution of forbidden knowledge. At that very moment, with my consciousness connected to Ermansoul, I sensed something was wrong. The pain started to torment my mind. By the time I reached Ermansoul, it was already displaying signs of corruption. Had I not repelled the pollution of forbidden knowledge with King Deshret thousands of years ago, I might have felt even more hopeless and lost. So what exactly is forbidden knowledge? It's a kind of knowledge that doesn't belong to this world, and a form of truth that can't be understood. It came from the very bottom of the abyss. Even I could never understand it. The world is constantly rejecting it, leading to all kinds of bad phenomena. If we allow forbidden knowledge to pollute Ermansoul, I'm afraid the entirety of Tevat could fall apart. So... There's knowledge that even the God of Wisdom can't understand? At that time, I knew I couldn't repel the forbidden knowledge with my strength alone. Which is why I created a device that compiled human wisdom and named it the Akasha. It's truly the world's most amazing invention. <laughs> Thank you. For a long time, I thought dreams were the fruit of human wisdom. Though it was selfish to do so, I borrowed people's dreams using the Akasha. Then I compiled their wisdom and all of my own power. Well, did it work? Thanks to the wisdom of the people of Sumeru, almost all the forbidden knowledge was cleared from Ermansoul. But... things didn't go as smoothly as I thought. I had a terrible headache, which gave me an uneasy feeling. And then, I remembered that my consciousness was also connected with Ermansoul. It brought me knowledge and wisdom, but vile corruption as well. From the very beginning, my existence had been polluted by the forbidden knowledge. Oh no! How could that happen? I've experienced that pain in your consciousness. 
It must have been a horrible experience. Yes, but my feelings weren't important. The important thing was that... Even if I died, my existence and everything related to me would continue to exist in Ermansoul as memories and knowledge. Meaning that the forbidden knowledge couldn't ever be permanently eradicated. And there's no way for me to eliminate myself. It would be a sort of paradox. So, I took the purest branch of Ermansoul as my incarnation in the next samsara and left a trail of clues, all in hopes that you would come here and remove me and my pollution from Ermansoul forever. Wait! No! I can't! <laughs> so you realize what that implies? You are very smart indeed. Ermansoul has all the knowledge and memories of this world. And as you've realized just now, removing me from Ermin's soul means I essentially will never have existed in this world. But this is the only way to save Ermin's soul. People love you so much and, and they've missed you so much over the past 500 years. I... I am exactly the same. So how... how can we just... Forget you like this. Is there really no other way? There must be something else I can do. You are the god of wisdom, Booer. You should know that there is no other way. But this... This is so cruel. I don't want to forget you. No need to feel so sad, Booer. As someone who delights in wisdom, you should feel joy at finally finding the answer. These are the words in their entirety. The answer you've been seeking all along. Let the world completely forget me. We all nestle under the great tree of wisdom, peering out to perceive the world. From the earth and from the rain, we perceive its wonders until we become a white bird to perch atop a branch and finally snap off the most important leaf. Once upon a time, I alone dreamed in this world. In my dreams, everybody would also dream after they fell asleep. Wild and wonderful thoughts would emerge from their minds. Some tumbled to the ground and others floated to the sky. Connecting all things in the world into one dazzling net. Among a plethora of worlds were numerous smaller worlds, all of fate, finding within the tapestry their brilliant glow. I gradually understood that these indescribable and constantly changing things are the most profound things in the world. Only they can completely repel the madness. Only dreams can awaken consciousness from the deepest darkness. one who posed this question, yet also the one who sought a solution. Saving the world with the dreams of the people used to be my answer. And now, you've also found your own answer, and I shall return all the dreams to the people. Sumeru, may you be blessed tonight with the sweetest of dreams. <laughs> I 
I'm alright. I'm just a little confused. We've just saved the world, right? So why... Why am I crying? I don't know where this feeling inside of me is coming from. But I feel very sad. Just now... We used the power of two Gnosis to successfully connect with the Ermin Soul Consciousness from 500 years ago. Then... We removed the remaining pollution from Ermin Soul. Yeah, what's wrong? Weren't you there just now? I've been waiting here far too long, but finally I have the chance to be alone with you. All the precious time I wasted has finally paid off. The Doctor! What have you done? Just a type of sound wave that can quickly put defenseless people into a dream. As I expected, it doesn't have any effect on gods. This is the only thing of interest I found among the Sage's research. I thought I'd take it for a little... spin. Don't worry. I know you would never forgive me if I actually killed them. I'm here to negotiate with you. Naturally, I won't do anything dangerous that could potentially damage our relationship. Negotiate with me? I heard you had already left Sumeru. Why are you here again now? I left Sumeru, but I also stayed in Sumeru. Even the God of Wisdom is restricted by the habits of cognition. How disappointing. You mean... there are many different versions of you in this world? An astute guess. Even the same individual will have different cognitions at different ages. A long time ago, I made a major decision in hopes of preserving all my perspectives of how I observe the world. Observation is the first step of any experiment, but observing the current world doesn't satisfy me. It lacks an important dimension, that of time. So I saved segments of all my ages and made them into independent individuals. That's all there is to it. Indulge me. How does the God of Wisdom find my method of seeking knowledge? It's an insult to the very concept of life. Life inherently has many rules and restrictions, each with its own significance and reason to exist. It can't be broken on a whim. <laughs> Good. Amazing, even. Indeed, it's difficult for humans to make peace with themselves. Not to mention oneself from a different period. Since you are in the Academia, why wait until now to show up? You could very well have stopped us and helped that fake god. Simple. Let me ask you this. Would any staff member ever help the subject in the middle of an experiment? It was my experiment. So why should I interfere with the results? The Academia saw the plan to create a god as their ultimate goal, yet you only saw it as an ordinary experiment. You... you really are crazy. If the experiment succeeded, you would have had a new god on your hands. How would you have faced your own god then? Would you still take the same stance? Would you still hold the same view of yourself? I'm first and foremost a scholar. These results should be left to the judgment of the hypothetical me confronted with that outcome. But you're right. 
And that's exactly why I'm disappointed with the conclusion of this experiment. As an individual, you don't have any sense of belonging. You seem to have even fewer convictions than a typical scholar. Oh no, I certainly have my own convictions. They just don't fit your standards, that's all. All right, that's enough conversation for today. The experiment is over and it's time to tidy up the equipment and reclaim any useful materials. For example, the Gnosis. <laughs> Lesser Lord Kusanali, you're an intelligent Archon. I'm sure you understand the disparity in our combat abilities at this time. Besides, you have no way to use that Electro-Gnosis in battle. Didn't you say you were here to negotiate with me? Somehow, it's starting to seem like you intend to take it by force now. <laughs> I'm merely stating a fact. After all, I'm also a scholar. Naturally, I hope to show proper respect and dignity to the God of Wisdom. Your hypocrisy is built on absolute confidence. I understand your scheme, but... What if I were to destroy the Gnosis now and awaken the Heavenly Principles? Awaken... the Heavenly Principles? Hmm... Do you think that's really possible? The Heavenly Principles have been silent for many years, but the Gnosis are symbols of their control over Tevat and all the laws. Will the destruction of a Gnosis attract the attention of the Heavenly Principles? And if so, how do the Fatui plan to deal with the consequences? Do you dare to gamble such a possibility with me? <laughs> gamble? How surprising. I thought you would show evidence or use rigorous reasoning to prove your point. The word gamble is the last thing I expected to hear from the God of Wisdom. But this is a clever move. You must have seen through me when I first captured your consciousness. As a scholar, I respect all possibilities. This has always been my principle and is an essential trait as an experimenter. Indeed, I can't ignore this possibility. So tell me then, what are your conditions? This foreign Gnosis will only lead to disaster if it stays in Sumeru. But this Electro-Gnosis is the prize I obtained after defeating one of your fellow Harbingers. Now, as the one who initiated this cascade of events, shouldn't you pay the corresponding price? Price? Interesting. What price would you have me pay? How about erasing all your other segments? <laughs> so this is how you wish to restrict me, the most threatening opponent of the Nation of Wisdom. What you request of me is like plucking out the eyes I have placed in the dimension of time. Segments are extraordinarily difficult to make. They require extremely rare resources and enormous amounts of time and effort, requiring me to destroy them all here and now. Bravo. A suitably wise decision on your part. Yes, how very interesting. Can I assume that you have long been wary of me? Among all the versions of me, this segment you see now is the most selfish. If it weren't me, your idea wouldn't have worked. What did you see when you were imprisoned? You were observing me. And that's how you know I've long grown tired of their doubts and endless arguments. Like you said, it's difficult to make peace with yourself. Being as smart as you are, have you managed to do that? Hmm. I see. If you think all those versions of me are worth a gnosis, then deal. You sure didn't hesitate much. Is the relationship between all the versions of you really that bad? I don't think there's any need to dwell on that. The surplus versions of me can be exchanged for a Gnosis. 
do you think anyone can offer themselves at a higher price? Besides, with my abilities, it's only a matter of time until I find better perspectives. Perhaps it's best to say, you're just temporarily ahead. But what I'd like to know is, how can you be sure that I've really erased them? I can see your remaining honesty. <laughs> what a ridiculous decision! Sheer you can't foolish. be serious! How could I have been you so short-sighted? You think that this is the end? Self. Wait, I'll have my revenge. Please wait. You'll make Good this moment riddance. count. You, you will regret this. Well, have you confirmed that it's complete? Here, take it. The future of Sumeru City will be in my hands alone. I will shut down the Akasha, and let curiosity and the thirst for knowledge drive the realm of academics once again. There won't be any further gaps for you to exploit. It truly pains me that my academic achievements have never been appreciated in my homeland. Of course, I have no interest in being rejected by this city for a third time. Another chess piece. And where is your dendronosis? Don't be greedy, Harbinger of Snezhnaya. No, this is a different transaction. If you intend to turn off the Akasha anyway, then there's no further use for the Gnosis of Sumeru, is there? Besides, isn't it the Archon's duty to deliver what's desired of the Seeker? Oh, judging from your expression, you don't seem to find the idea very agreeable. Then let's think of it this way. Since you're the god of wisdom, how about I exchange some knowledge with you? People exchanging knowledge with the god of wisdom is the stuff of legends. Yet here you wish to exchange knowledge for the god of wisdom's property. Arrogant as that is, it has piqued my interest. Let me ask you. Have you, in all your mighty knowledge, ever heard the rumor that the skies of Tevat are fake? Huh? That's the secret hidden by Ermin's soul concerning the truth of this world. Once I finish telling you about this, it will be time for me to say goodbye. With negotiations, we've all gotten what we wanted. I'm very glad I got to meet you like this. Your arrogance may know no bounds, and convictions may mean nothing to you. But I'll still listen to what you have to say. Okay, wake him up. Are you awake? Kali says it's time for breakfast. Come on, get up! Good morning! How are you feeling today? Good to hear. It looks like we've recovered pretty well. Not even Tainari could stop us from going out now, right? Traveler, let's go!